so yeah, so then it was, okay, Nicholas, great job on the characters, really liked it. Uh, here's this from, uh, but we know that's not really the direction we want to go. Uh, can you uh, give a look at um, Clipwood for us? And here's a better version of this. There we go. Sure. Uh, it's dark, sorry. Uh, yeah, and so Nicholas, who, just so you know, does not like architectural drawing whatsoever, so this is very <laughs> task for him, came back uh -huh. with this. Yeah, this is an embarrassing one to have up because I was still figuring out what I was doing, uh, uh, building the bridge as I was walking across it. Um, <laughs> but uh, I knew that there was that we had we had a couple things. We had like my own feelings about the book, which were growing like stronger and stronger, and then we had the needs of the production and the sort of guidelines we had set. No tutor, and I was like, oh boy, that's all I want to do immediately is just create everything in sort of a tutor uh, palette. Um, so I started to sort of mish, mishmash some ideas I had about seaside towns and seaside towns I'd been around and being from New England, I brought in a little of that sort of, um, the, that gene pool, I don't know, that kind of like the old yeah, weather veiny, seaside, right. shingly, kind of slat-sided. We had a small influence from Assassin's Creed uh, that, that has, that's, Tom brought that in a couple times. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. The, new, the, the Revolutionary, Revolutionary War, War Assassin's yeah. Creed stuff, yeah. Where it was set in that space, where Okay, we like some of that influence. Yeah. Um, again, trying to find a space that Clifford lived in that wasn't one we'd all seen. Mm -hmm. But a couple of things about this image, um, there's sort of two. There's one about the styling, which is uh, it's very loose, and in fact, you know, for the final production stuff, mm -hmm. we would need to tighten it up. But one of the key visual tenets we had was to leave leave vagary and be confident in allowing things to fade um, from focus and allow things to become sort of mysterious or un uncertain if we didn't need to define it very clearly. Um, and that's a, just a sort of a watercolor look and technique, but what that also gives you is visually some of that space between ideas uh, in the same way that we were just talking about the words and the uh, descriptions of the characters where you can fill in with your own imagination and, and you bring kind of a, a bit of a dreamlike quality and a bit of that sense of how you felt reading to a look that has a little more room in it. Um, and, uh, oh, actually, previous image really quick. And then an another thing we were trying to do with the crevasse as well, but also these little uh, fang perches and stuff like that, we tried to try to find everything we, <coughs> every opportunity we could to tell the story of what was happening in Glipwood visually as well as narratively through the short. So fang occupation, the, the occupying force in this cute, quaint town that's a bit shabby, that may have been kind of nicer at one point, but has sort of gone to seed and then this occupying forces come in. Um, and so finding places to sort of hang these dark black banners with the fang insignia, and then I had the idea of sort of pointing, putting these uh, little watchtowers on the tops of some of the buildings that they would put um, to look out to sea or to sort of just keep an eye on the constituents of the town. And that felt like, that was one of those, like, it's a cool, it's a bit, you know, like, it's a bit video gamey, it's a bit, you know, something else, but it checked by all these narrative principles we had set. So we felt like it was good to move forward with that. And in full disclosure, unfortunately, this uh, image out to sea through this never made the final in the short. Uh, we actually had a great action sequence that we played through here um, that was one of our cutscenes. Um, and it just, we didn't need this part of the town ultimately. So it's sad. Uh, so the next task was uh, headed back to the. Take it back. It could be farmhouse again. Really dark here, but yeah, really dark. Um, yeah, and AKB Farmhouse was, was just one of those buildings where it's it's not a, in the book it's not described as anything but home. You know, it's, it's, it's warm, it's home, it's worn down. There's a number of things that are said about it, but it's not, um, there's no single iconic visual um, that's like very super standout. It's a cottage, and it's sweet, and it needs to evoke all those feelings of familiarity and home. Um, and we were trying to find like, okay, how can we do all of that for us and for our viewers and in a way that really like, yeah, kind of takes the story forward and allows us to do all the things we want to do. For me, the joy was in fi figuring out little details like the nugget door um, and hiding uh, thwaps throughout the image, <laughs> which you can't really see in the dark, and the garden with potatoes. And um, in the interior plan of this, like Poto's room is styled very small, like a ship's cabin. Um, while Nia's room takes up a lot more space, and Poto has a porthole for his door, and actually the window, 
This is an earlier version. Yeah, we revised it, yeah. But the external window is a porthole window that sort of harkens back to his seafaring past, and little details like that that started to bring some of the, the guts of the, the book and uh, story into the visual stuff that we were doing. And then we ducked inside, and actually, uh, again, our friend Pat uh, did this interior for us uh, of uh, their house, and <clears throat> again, lovely. Um, and you know, much more structured, right? So you can see how that was coming along. Um, and then Nicholas came back. We had someone else uh, apply color. And Nicholas came back and kind of gave it um, its definition and life, and kind of all the. You'll notice there's a. Wow. I would just do these little touches, passes. That was kind of my one of my roles on the project, besides doing the designs of the characters from the ground up and some of the environment stuff, is to go in and sort of specify the carved sort of uh, flowers and floral motifs that Lily and uh, Poto had sort of carved into the legs of the table and into the door, um, the bench at the table as well. There was a, a color palette and pattern that uh, I tried to work into some of the throw rugs and um, tablecloths that sort of was an Aneerin palette in our mm. sort of fiction. Um, herbs and different various things that kind of harken back again, just trying to work every chance we could uh, to get a little bit more of the fiction into it. Even the styling on the chair there, the two distinct chairs, I believe that one was like a little more throne-like. Um, and these little opportunities we had to sort of visually tease, you know, maybe it passes by in a blink, um, but you know that that's, you know, Nia's chair at the table, and she's the queen. She is the queen. All right, so then we start handing off. So we've got, I'm trying to get out of Andrew's books and into what we're believing into with Tom and, and into Nicholas. And then Nicholas had the charge of going to different painters, right, who would then begin to execute on that. And so one of the first ones, is this fine piece, do you recall? The crevasse. Uh, this was actually in the film, but um, uh, this I, I think came before Leela's jump work, I don't remember. Anyways, one of the early ones, and I know we spend a lot of time kind of instructing on the same methodology we just described to you, to these painters, which is very vulnerable, so a lot of painters want to really render it out and kind of give you everything that they can give you, and what we were saying is no, let your brush strokes be visible, like let that line just kind of sit there, um, and that's, that was really difficult, uh, and as different painters would come in, they would, of course, tighten up and we'd say, nope, loosen it back up again, let's get back to this balance. One of the things that we started to do, which we didn't kind of ran out of time on our short, but was passing the paintings between the different painters uh, so that they would kind of meld their painting styles and strokes so that you wouldn't be able to recognize, oh, here we went from Leela to Nicholas, you know, and bouncing back and forth. That you, We didn't want you to pick that up. We didn't do as much of that as we wanted to, but uh, our intent was. Um, technically, we had a set of Photoshop brushes that everybody used. So. <laughs> uh, this one, you've probably all seen this one. It's ones that really this one talk about this one this one was really tough it was tough but it, it was so important when we landed it to me um, this is Justin Oaksford's work and he's a friend of mine we've known each other from different projects and through different friends before um, and I felt like he was a, a really good visual fit we just he and I work very similarly together stylistically but um, it's a tricky thing trying to pull somebody else from sort of outside this world. Once I had sort of been sucked into it, been to my first hutch mood, and felt like a growing sense of ownership over the tone and feel of this to bring somebody else in and be like, just take it. Like here is all this feeling, you know, just make it Glipwood. And for them to be like, like a village, like no, not just any village, like the village of Glipwood, you know. Um, and uh, I, I just was really thrilled when we finally nailed this shot and this look. Um, it's one of my favorite paintings of the whole thing. Um, just to get the scale and the sense of like loneliness of the town clustered on the edge there, and the strong verticality of the cliffs and the drop off to the sea and the vast kind of beautiful. And like, again, you're seeing these like big swaths of color where things are left vague. Um, that I just think is, that's a, a really beautiful look instead of it being an artistic cop-out, it's not. It's, it's just a commitment to something that we believed in, which was to say, leave things open. This was another piece by uh, one of our artists, Leela, um, 
Lila, not Lili, that was confusing the whole time. <laughs> um, she uh, made a pass at Glyphwood, uh, looking down out kind of towards see this is in town more, um, that was just so evocative. Now here you can start to see where it's, this is too loose, right? <laughs> if our characters were to drop in on this, they don't, they don't work, right? They're, they're, they don't, so this was, but it was meant to be a color study, it was kind of just impressionistic, but to give you a contrast of what it looked like. Uh, the final that another artist ended up taking and delivering was this one, which you did see in the short, uh, only one shot, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, brings up the memory. It's got to be this. It's it's such a, a a juggling act once you're into the flow of production between what is like precious and what needs to be done yesterday. Um, and so there's always this back and forth between like I just we want to take every opportunity to hide every specific reference on every sign and every <laughs> window should have a poster like wanted humans for. Baking, um, but you, there just was only so much time to, to do that in, and so we were trying to make decisions that um, worked according to a hierarchy of like what is the most important focal point for the characters, you know, what is the most important thing we're saying with the shot, and so what are the things that are in focus and given visual emphasis. Um, so things like the the Fang Tower in the background there. Uh, Um, the sense of going around a corner and giving us a little bit more visual depth, little weather vanes and sort of steeples and giving the town a little bit of, of verticality um, and the you know, signs and stuff like that. But when you're in the short itself, it passes by so quickly. Uh, it's heartbreaking a little bit to realize like all the effort and painting and thought that goes into this can just breeze by. Uh, but it's all in there. <laughs>